I'm glad to see you were able to find this video. I'd also be glad to hear from you. Let me know what you want to see or what you're having trouble with so that I can make content that's useful and meaningful to you. With that said, let's jump right in, shall we? So our previous video was the lecture portion of our summary module. And really what the summary is, is the meat and potatoes of the orders of operations. So we're taking all of the different operations themselves and pushing them back together and actually being able to solve an equation that has all of the different operations together. This video series looked at how each of the different operations works on their own so we could actually take them apart and understand how they work and all of the rules that are associated with them before we actually put them all together. So really what the summary is focusing on is not how do you solve brackets or how do you solve an exponent, but rather when you have an equation, what is the order that I'm supposed to solve these in? Because even though you know how to do the step, if you don't do them in the correct order, you're going to get the wrong answer. So really the summary is about the order that you're solving them in. And if you're having any problems with the individual operations themselves, I suggest going back and watching those specific modules. We also pulled out the working with signs because signs can be really tricky. If you don't know how to convert your signs, you're going to get the wrong answer and it, it's very frustrating and it's easy to do. So that's why we pulled out working with signs as well. And really this is just a compilation trying to pull it together and we're focusing on the order which you solve them. So just a quick little review on what's actually part of the orders of operations so that we're all on the same page. You're always going to do brackets first and you're always going to try to find the child brackets. You're always solving the innermost bracket first. Every time you find a bracket, you're going to start over and say, are there any more brackets? Because you always want to find the innermost one and then solve that. The next thing uh, in the order of operations is the exponents. So once you've cleared out the brackets, you're in the innermost one, it's time to start focusing on exponents. And exponents are essentially taking the base number and multiplying it by whatever the frequency is of the exponent. If the exponent is negative, we're going to go ahead and flip the whole base and the exponent to get the reciprocal, so which it would mean 1 divided by the base number by the positive exponent. Only the exponent flips, not the base. And if your base number is negative, you have to remember to take that base with you when you're multiplying it out. There's a very big difference between multiplying negative 3 and 3. Okay, so we want to make sure we're keeping an eyes on our signs. Division and multiplication is straightforward. It's just division and multiplication. There's no fancy tricks here. The only thing to consider is that you want to make sure you're solving them in the order which they appear. You're always going to solve division or multiplication in the order that they appear. It doesn't matter if the division, because it's in bed miss, appears first. It's how it appears in the equation moving left to right. Addition is in the same vein. You do them in the order that they appear. So regardless of bedness, if the S comes before the A, you're going to need to do the subtraction first. Okay, with all of that summary, if you're having any problems, I suggest going back and watching the actual lecture portion. I want to get into the meat and potatoes of actually solving these equations because they're a little bit longer, so they're going to take a little bit longer to go through. So let's go ahead and look at example A. And we're going to start off the same way we do any other equation. Are there any brackets? And right out of the gate, we have a bracket. So we're going to go ahead and start over. Are there any other brackets? So 2 times 3 minus sign opening bracket. We found an opening bracket, which means we start over again. Are there any brackets? 6 divided by 2 closing bracket. So we found the end, and there's no brackets within. So this is the innermost bracket, and we're going to solve for that first. Since we've finished step one, we can move on to step two. Are there any exponents within our innermost bracket? In this case, no. So we can go ahead and move on to step three, which is division or multiplication. And in this case, we do have a division. So we're going to go ahead and solve that first. So six divided by two is equal to three, and we drop the rest of the equation. Now that this bracket has been solved, we can go ahead and step out into the parent and look to see if there are any exponents. So 2 times 3 minus opening bracket 3 closing bracket. 
So no, there are no exponents within this bracket. So we're going to go ahead and move on to step three. Step three is division or multiplication, and we do have a multiplication right at the beginning. So two times three is equal to six, and we drop the rest of the equation. Let's continue to look. We have six with the negative sign directly next to an opening bracket. When you have a sign with no number associated with it, it essentially means one. And so now we have a negative one directly beside a three, an opening bracket rather, and that means we're actually going to have to expand, and expand means multiply. So we're actually going to take negative one times three. So a negative one times three would be negative three. And so now we have a six times a three. This equation is still fucking wrong because I can't do basic fucking math apparently. Uh, this would be six times three. So this step would be six times three. Six times negative three, which would be equal to, let's get the calculator out, calculator. 6 times 3, it's 18, it's 18. Why am I even putting it on the calculator? Because i got to make sure I put basic math in right. No, I don't want a friggin' exponent. Why are you doing exponents? Just copy the whole line, I guess. Because you're being a pain in the butt. So this was actually going to be... Wait, where did my bracket go? This still has a bracket. And this still has a bracket. That's what screwed me up. I dropped a bracket. So 6 times 3 is equal to negative 18. And this would be negative 18 times negative 18, which is a way different number than 9. 18 times 18 is equal to 324 but it would still be positive because it would be. Uh, so what needs to be read? This needs to be read. I guess let's do the blue first. This needs to be blue. No, I need to keep the negative sign, but I need it to be blue. Yeah, make it blue. Just make it blue, goddammit. just want to do my fucking recording, but no, because I can't do basic goddamn math. No, I don't want the fucking thing red. I want this to be red. And then this becomes negative 18. I need the negative sign to be red, too. One day I'll get past question A, because question A is dumb. Okay. Let's try this again. One, two, three. So let's go ahead and look at example A. So right out of the bat, we have an opening bracket. So that means we have to start over. Are there any other brackets? 2 times 3 minus an opening bracket. So we found another bracket. That means we have to start over again. Are there any brackets? 6 divided by 2. Closing bracket. So there's no more brackets. We found the innermost bracket. So we can go ahead and move on to the second step. Are there any exponents within our innermost bracket? 6 divided by 2, there are no exponents. So that means we can go ahead and move on to step 3, which is division or multiplication. And we do have a division, so we can go ahead and solve that first. 6 divided by 2 is equal to 3, and we drop the rest of the equation. Now that there's nothing left to solve in our innermost bracket, we can take a step out and go to the parent of our innermost bracket. So now we go ahead and look at it and see, are there any exponents associated with the new innermost bracket? So 2 times 3 minus sign, opening bracket, three, closing bracket. So there are no exponents within this bracket, so we can go ahead and move on to step three. Step three is division or multiplication, and we do have a multiplication right at the beginning. We have two times three. So two times three is equal to six, and we drop the rest of the equation. So now we can go ahead and look to see if there's any further division or multiplication within the new innermost bracket and we actually have a negative sign directly beside an opening bracket. And if we can remember our brackets, what this means is we have to expand out the bracket. And when you have a negative or a positive sign and there's no number associated with it, we're essentially saying one. 
So what we're doing is we're saying negative 1 times 3, which would actually give us a negative 3. So now we can go ahead and look again. Now we have a 6 directly beside an opening bracket. Again, this means we have to expand. So what we're saying is it's actually 6 times negative 3. So we have a negative times a positive that's going to give us a negative, and 6 times 3 is equal to 18, so we now have negative 18. So now we're going to go ahead and look. There's nothing else to solve in our innermost bracket, so we can take a step out. Are there any exponents? Yes, we have a 2. And what this means is we're taking the base number, negative 18, and multiplying by itself twice. So this will actually be minus 18 times minus 18. A minus times a minus will give us a positive, and 18 times 18 will give us 324. There's no further operations required, so our final answer is 324. So let's go ahead and look at example B. Again, we start off with brackets. So let's look and see if there are any in this particular equation. We have 2 times 3 plus 6 to the power of 2 divided by opening bracket. So we have a bracket, so we start over. Are there any other brackets? 6 divided by 3 closing bracket. So there's no further brackets. We found the innermost bracket, so we're going to go ahead and solve this one first. So we look to see are there any exponents. There are no exponents within our innermost bracket, so we can go ahead and move to step 3. Is there any division or multiplication? Yes, 6 divided by 3. So we're going to go ahead and solve that first, and we drop the rest of the equation. So now we're going to go ahead and look to see are there any exponents. Since we've solved the brackets, it's just a plain integer within the brackets. Now we can go ahead and start looking for exponents. So 2 times 3 plus 6 to the power of 2. So we have an exponent, which means we have to go ahead and expand that out. Our base number is 6, so we're multiplying 6 by itself twice, which is 6 times 6. 6 times 6 is equal to 36, and we're going to drop the rest of the equation. So now we're going to go ahead and look. Are there any more exponents within our equation? No. That means we can move on to step 3, which is division or multiplication. So let's look. And right off the bat, we have a multiplication. And we do division and multiplication in the order which they appear. So we're going to go 2 times 3, which is equal to 6. And again, we drop the rest of the equation. Now we're going to start over and continue to look for division or multiplication. We have 6 plus 36 divided by 2. So we do have another division, 36 divided by 2. And we're going to go ahead and solve that. 36 divided by 2 is equal to 18. And again, we drop the rest of the equation. Now we can move to step 4, which is just addition and subtraction. We have an addition, so we can go ahead and solve that. 6 plus 18 is equal to 24, giving us a final answer of 24. Example C, we have minus 5 plus 2 to the power of 3 with an opening bracket. So we're going to check again to see if there are any opening brackets within our current bracket. 6 minus 9 closing bracket. So this is the innermost bracket, so we can go ahead and solve this first. There are no exponents. There's no division or multiplication, so we can move straight on to step 4. And we can do the subtraction. So 6 minus 9 is equal to negative 3. And again, we drop the rest of the equation. So now we're going to go ahead and look to see, are there any exponents? Because we've already solved as much of the brackets as we can. Minus 5 plus 2 to the power of 3. So we have another exponent. And what this is saying is we're going to multiply 2 by itself 3 times. So we're going to have 2 times 2 times 2. And we only want to solve one operation per step, so we're going to go ahead and say 2 times 2 is 4, and again drop the rest of the equation. 4 times 2 is 8, and again we're dropping the rest of the equation. So let's go ahead and look at our equation now. We have minus 5 plus 8, and then we have an opening bracket and a closed bracket right beside each other with nothing in between. And if we can remember our brackets, that means it's expanding. And expanding means multiplying. So let's go ahead and clean up our equation. What it's actually saying is 8 times negative 3. So if we have a positive times a negative, that's going to give us a negative number. And 8 times 3 is 24. So that gives us negative 24. But now we have two signs again. And if we can remember, if it's just a sign, it's essentially saying 1. So it's plus 1 times negative 24, which essentially just we're just playing with signs here, because 1 times itself is always going to be the same number. So a positive times a negative is going to give you a negative, and 1 times 24 is still 1. So we're going to have to simplify this to be minus 24. 
So there's no more multiplication, there's no division, so we can move along on to step four, which is addition and subtraction. And we do have a subtraction, so we can go ahead and do that. Five minus 24 is equal to minus 19. And there's no further operation, so our final answer is minus 19. Let's look at example D. Again, we're looking for brackets. Minus 3 to the power of 2 plus opening bracket. Perfect. So we're going to start over and look for more brackets. 3 times 4 divided by 6 closing bracket. So we found the innermost bracket, so we're going to go ahead and look for step 2. Are there any exponents? There are no exponents within our innermost bracket, so we're going to go ahead and move on to step 3, which is division and multiplication. And we do the division and multiplication in the order that they appear. So we have 3 times 4. We're going to do that first. So 3 times 4 is 12, and we drop the rest of the equation. So now let's go ahead and look at our bracket again. We have 12 divided by 6. So we can go ahead and solve that. 12 divided by 6 is equal to 2. And again, we're dropping the rest of the equation. So now that we've solved that bracket, we can go a step out and look at the parent, which is just the rest of the line. And there are no more brackets to solve, so we can go ahead and look for exponents. So Let's look, minus 3 to the power of 2. We have another exponent, so we're going to have to go ahead and expand that out. Our base is negative 3, so we want to remember to grab the sign, and we're multiplying negative 3 by itself twice. So essentially what we're saying is negative 3 times negative 3. A negative times a negative will give you a positive, and 3 times 3 is 9. And again, drop the rest of the equation. So now let's just clean up our lines because the brackets were just leftovers that were for legibility purposes. They're just straight numbers. 9 plus 2 is equal to 11, and our final answer is 11. Let's go ahead and look at example E. What we're looking for is brackets. So let's walk through the equation. Minus 2 exponent opening bracket. Now this bracket up here, the bracket 3 minus 1 closing bracket, is part of the exponent. It is not part of the main root of the equation. So we're going to step back. We're not going to solve this one yet. We're going to continue through the equation looking for brackets because we haven't finished step one yet. So let's keep going. Plus sign opening bracket. So we found a bracket on the main equation. So let's go ahead and check to see if there are any child brackets. 9 divided by 3, closing bracket. There are no more brackets. So we have found the innermost bracket that we can go ahead and start solving. We'll let, look to see if there are any exponents. No, I can't see any exponents in here. So we can move on to step three, which is division and multiplication. And we do have a division, so we're going to go ahead and solve 9 divided by 3 first. 9 divided by 3 is equal to 3, and we drop the rest of the equation. Now we can step back to the parent and check to see if there are any more brackets. There was nothing to the right of it and there was nothing to the left, so the brackets are solved. We can now move to step two, which is exponents. We can go back to our minus two and see that we have that bracket that we saw right at the beginning. Now, since we're on the exponent step, we can go ahead and solve this. So let's look inside of our bracket to see if there are any more exponents. So there are no exponents within our sub-equation, so we can go ahead and move on to step three, which is division or multiplication. And there's no division or multiplication, so we can move on to step four. Step four is addition and subtraction, and we do have subtraction, so we can go ahead and solve that. Three minus one is equal to two, and now we have a plain integer, which we can actually expand out the negative two base. Negative two times negative two is what it would look like. If we multiply a negative times a negative, that gives us a positive. Two times two is four. So it gives us a positive 4, and we're dropping the rest of the equation. Now there's no division or multiplication within the rest of the equation, so we can go ahead and just move on to step 4, which is addition and subtraction. And we do have an addition, so we can go ahead and say 4 plus 3 is 7, giving us a final answer of 7. Let's look at F. We're looking for brackets. Right out of the gate, we have an opening bracket. So we're going to go and start over again. Are there any more brackets? Yes. The next thing is another opening bracket, so we're going to go ahead and start over again. Are there any more brackets? 2 plus 9 closing bracket. So we found an innermost bracket. There's no brackets within this bracket, so we can go ahead and start solving it. Are there any exponents? No. Any division or multiplication? No. So we're on step 4. 
and there is addition, so we can go ahead and solve that. 2 plus 9 is equal to 11, and we drop the rest of the equation. So we've solved our inner bracket, so let's go ahead and step back out and continue through our equation to see if there are any more brackets. As we continue through, we can see that there's another opening bracket, so we'll start over again. Are there any child brackets? Minus 9, minus 4, closing bracket. So this is also an innermost bracket. There's no, no children within it, so we can go ahead and start solving it. There's no exponents, so step 2 is clear. No division or multiplication, so step 3 is also clear. We are now on step 4. So minus 9 minus 4 will give us minus 13. So we'll go ahead and write minus 13 and then drop the rest of the equation. So when we look at our bracket now, because our innermost bracket has been solved, we go back to the parent. We have an opening bracket and a closing bracket, or a closing bracket and an opening bracket, rather, directly beside each other without any kind of sign. This means we need to expand, and expand means multiply, so let's go ahead and clean up our line. What we're actually doing is 11 times negative 13. Now, a negative times a positive gives us a negative, and 11 times 13 gives us 143. So we have a negative integer of 143. So there's nothing to solve in our bracket again, so we can go ahead and step back out and check to see if there are any more brackets. There's no more brackets at the end of our equation, so we can go ahead and move on to step 2. Are there any exponents? And yes, we have an exponent. We have a 3. So this means we're taking the base, which is a negative 143, and multiplying by itself three times. So we're going to have a hundred, negative 143 times negative 143 times negative 143. So we're going to start by solving the first operation first. Negative times a negative gives us a positive, and 143 times 143 will give us 20,499. So now we're going to take 20,499 times negative 143. A negative times a positive will give us a negative, and 20,499 times negative 143 will give us negative 2,924,207. There are no further operations required, so our final answer is negative 2,924,207. So our number is getting bigger, and I'm sure you've noticed that through some of the other examples we're doing. We're getting to bigger numbers or very small numbers, and this is because once you start doing the different operations, and once you start adding exponents in and, and brackets that are expanding, the numbers keep getting bigger. But again, bigger number does not mean harder. It's just making more work for it ourselves. So keep that in mind, even though they're big numbers, don't be intimidated. Just solve each one as it goes, because it's just either addition, subtraction, even your brackets essentially is still just addition and subtraction. Same thing with your exponent, because you're multiplying. So don't let the size of the numbers or the length of your equation intimidate you. Let's go ahead and look at example G. We're going to start off the same way we do every other equation. Are there any brackets? Minus 5 to the exponent 3, opening bracket. So we have an opening bracket. So we start over. Is there another opening bracket? Minus 2 plus 6 divided by opening bracket. Perfect. So now we want to go ahead and check again. Are there any more opening brackets? 3 minus 5 closing bracket. So we found the innermost bracket, and we're going to go ahead and solve that first. There's no exponents, so step 2 is clear. No division or multiplication, so step 3 is clear. That puts us on step 4. So we can go ahead and do the subtraction. 3 minus 5 is equal to minus 2, and we drop the rest of the equation. Now we're going to step back out into the parent, and we can see that we have minus 2 plus 6 divided by a negative 2. So we're going to take negative 2 and 6 and divide them. So a negative divided by a positive will give you a negative, and 6 divided by 2 will give you 3. So we have negative 3. Now, inside of our bracket, we only have subtraction. And we're subtracting a negative 2 by a negative 3. So that's going to give us a negative 5 and we're dropping the rest of the equation. So now we can go back out and look at the rest of our line and see if there's any more brackets. There are no other brackets, so we can go ahead and move on to step two. Step two is exponents, and we do have an exponent right at the beginning, negative five to the power of three. So what we're going to do is take negative five and multiply it by itself three times. So we have a negative five times a negative five times a negative five, and we drop the rest of the equation. 
We only want to solve one operation per line, so let's go ahead and solve the first one. Negative 5 times negative 5. A negative times a negative gives you a positive, and 5 times 5 is 25. And we drop the rest of the equation. So now we have 25 times negative 5. So now we have a negative times a positive. That will give us a negative number, and 25 times 5 gives us 125. So now we look at our equation, and we see we have another exponent. So we can go ahead and solve that exponent. So we're taking negative 5 times itself. So it'll be negative 5 times negative 5. A negative times a negative will give us a positive, so that's positive 25. And now when we look at our equation, we can see that we have a number directly beside an opening bracket. When that happens, it means expand, and expand means multiply. So let's clean up our line and change it so we can actually see that it's a multiplication. We're going to multiply a negative by a positive, so our number is going to be negative, and 125 times 25 is 3,125. There's no further operation, so our final answer is negative 3,125. Let's look at h, again, looking for brackets. And right out of the gate, we have a bracket. So we're looking for another opening bracket, 8 minus opening bracket. So we start over again. Are there any more brackets? 4 minus 2 times 3 to the power of 3, closing bracket. So we found the innermost bracket we can start trying to solve in here. So we start with step 2. Is there any exponents? Yes, we have 3 to the power of 3. That means we're going to expand it out to say 3 times 3 times 3. And we only want to solve one operation per line, so we're going to go 3 times 3 is 9. And then 9 times 3 is 27, dropping the rest of the equation as we go. So let's look at our bracket now. We have 4 minus 2 times 27. So we have a multiplication, so we're going to go ahead and solve that next since we've cleared all of the exponents out and division is step 3. So we're going to say minus 2 times 27 is equal to minus 54, right? Because you have a negative number times a positive. Keep track of your signs. And so we drop the rest of the equation once again. Now we look at our bracket, and the division and multiplication is cleared. We're done with step 3. We can move on to step 4, which is addition and subtraction, which we do have a subtraction. So let's go ahead and do that. 50, um, 4 minus 54 will give us negative 50, and we drop the rest of the equation. So let's go ahead and look at our equation now. We've finished this bracket. We can go out a step. And we have 8 minus opening bracket. When we have a sign directly beside another opening bracket, we're saying essentially we're expanding out, which means we're multiplying the outside by the inside. And if there's no number associated with the sign, it's 1. So negative 1 times negative 50. So we're saying a negative times a negative gives us a positive, and 1 times 50 is 50. So we now have a positive 50 instead of a negative 50. But we've cleaned up our equation, and we've gotten rid of some of the brackets. So now inside of our brackets, there's no more division or multiplication. We can move on to step 4. And we do have an addition, so we can go ahead and solve that. 8 plus 50. 8 plus 50 is equal to 58. And now that we've solved our innermost bracket, we can again step out into our parent. There are no more brackets, because this was the only one there. We can go ahead and move on to step 2, which is exponents. And we do have an exponent. We have an exponent of 2, which means we're taking our base, 58, and multiplying by itself. So we have 158 and 158 because of that 2. And 58 times 58 is equal to 116. So our final answer is 116. Looking at i, again, always starting with brackets. 6 minus 2 times 3 minus 2 opening bracket. So we start over. Are there any more brackets? 1 plus 4 closing bracket. So this is the innermost bracket, and we need to solve this first. 1 plus 4. There's no exponents. There's no division or multiplication, so we're straight on to step 4. 1 plus 4 is 5, and we drop the rest of the equation. So let's go ahead and look at our equation now. There are no more brackets, and there's no exponents, so we can move along to step 3. Is there any division or multiplication? 6 minus 2 times 3, so we do have a multiplication. We solve them in the order that they appear, so we're going to go minus 2 times 3. A minus times a positive will give us a minus number, and 2 times 3 is 6, and we drop the rest of the equation. So we're still looking for division or multiplication. We have 6 minus 6 minus 2 with an opening bracket. If we have an opening bracket directly beside a number, it means we're multiplying. 
So essentially what we're saying is it's minus 2 times 5. So minus 2 times 5, a minus times a positive is a minus, and then 2 times 5 is 10. And so we've cleared out the division and multiplication. Step 3 is now clear. Now we can move on to step 4. Step 4, there's no addition and there's only subtraction, and we do them in the order that they appear. So 6 minus 6 is equal to 0, and we drop the rest of the equation. And look at that. That's it. We've solved the equation. There's no further operations required, so we can just say our final answer is negative 10. Let's look at J. Again, always looking for brackets. Minus opening brackets. So we start over. Are there any brackets? 2 plus 5 times 6 minus 8, closing bracket. So this is the innermost bracket, and we're going to solve that first. Is there any exponents? No exponents within our bracket, so that moves us on to step three. Is there any division or multiplication? Yes, we have a division and multiplication right in the middle, but it doesn't matter where they are. We want to solve the multiplication first before we move on to step four. So five plus six is equal to 30, and we drop the rest of the equation. Remember to bring the negative sign down with us, and then we bring the rest. So now we look at our equation and we see that there's no more division or multiplication within the inner bracket. So we can go ahead and move on to step four. Step four is addition and subtraction and we do them in the order that they appear. So we're going to go two plus 30 and give us positive 32 and again drop the rest of the equation. Now we're going to finish the second half of that. 32 minus 8 is equal to 24. And so now we're going to go ahead and expand out. We're going to go back to the parent and we can see that we have an exponent. So what we're essentially saying is 24 times 24 times 24, right, because the exponent is 3, so the frequency is 3, so the base times itself 3 times. 24 times 24 is equal to 48, and we drop the rest of the equation because we only want to solve one operation per step. 48 times 24 is 1,152. And the only thing left to do is we have this strangling little negative sign. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that and we're going to expand out the contents of our bracket. If we have a negative sign by itself, it's essentially saying negative 1. So we're going to take negative 1 times positive 1,152, which will give us a negative number. And 1 times 1,152 will be 1,152. So our final answer is negative 1,152. Let's look at example K. We are looking for brackets. 3 minus 2 times 4, opening bracket. So we're going to start over again. Are there any brackets? Minus 2, closing bracket. So this is the innermost bracket. And there's nothing to actually solve in this bracket. The reason this bracket is here, it's separating the negative by the 4. So what we're going to see in our future steps when we get to step three is that we're going to have to expand. So this is for legibility purposes to make sure that we're not subtracting. We're not subtracting the four and the negative two at any point. It's to expand out. So in this case, the brackets are essentially solved. We're going to move on to step two, which is the exponents. Are there any exponents? Yes, we have an exponent here. And so we're going to expand out negative two. So we want to make sure we take negative 2 times itself. So it's negative 2 times negative 2. A negative times a negative is going to give us a positive, and that gives us positive 4. So now we look at our equation, and there's no further exponents. Step 2 is done. We can go ahead and move on to step 3. Step 3 being division and multiplication. So let's look through our equation. We have a negative 2 times 4. And we want to solve them in the order that they appear, so we need to do negative 2 times 4 before we move on. A negative times a positive will give us a negative, and 2 times 4 will give us 8. So let's look at our new line. We have 3 minus 8, opening bracket. This means we need to expand, and expanding means multiply, so minus 8 times 4 is essentially what we're going to be doing. A negative times a positive will give us a negative, and 8 times 4 is 32. So now we've finished off the multiplication and the division, so we can move on to step four, which is addition and subtraction. Let's look at our equation. We do have a subtraction. It's the only thing left. So we're going to go ahead and say 3 minus 32. That gives us minus 29, and there's no further operation, so our final answer is minus 29. Let's look at example L. We're looking for brackets. 8 divided by 4 times 2, opening bracket. Are there any more brackets? 8 minus 6, closing bracket. So no, this is the innermost bracket, and we're going to go ahead and solve this first. So 8 minus 6 is equal to 2, 
and we drop the surrounding equation, everything from the left and everything on the right. So now we're going to go ahead and look at our equation. There's no further brackets to solve, so we can move to step two. Step two is exponents. Are there any exponents? Yes, we have a four directly associated with the two. So what we're saying is going to be two times two times two times two. And we only want to solve one operation at a time, so we're going to go ahead and solve two times two, which gives us four, and we drop the rest of the equation. 4 times 2 is 8, and again, we drop the rest of the equation, remembering to keep the left side down as well, even though we're not solving anything in it. We bring everything on the left and everything on the right. 8 times 2 is equal to 16, and again, dropping the rest of the equation. So now we look at our new line and we see, is there any other exponents? No. So step 2 is also complete. We can move along to step 3, which is division and multiplication, and we do them in the order that they appear. So we have an 8 divided by a 4, right out of the gate. So we're going to solve that first. 8 divided by 4 is 2, and we drop the rest of the equation. So let's continue through to see if there's any further division or multiplication required. 2 plus 2, opening bracket. If you have a number directly beside a bracket, that means we need to expand. And expand means multiply, so we're going to say 2 times 16. 2 times 16 is equal to 32, and we drop the rest of the equation. We're done with step 3, so we can move along to step 4. 2 plus 32, that gives us 34. There's no further operations required, so our final answer is 34. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at example M, and we're looking for brackets. So we have 2 to the exponent negative 3, opening bracket. Excellent, so we're going to start looking for a new bracket. Another opening bracket, perfect. So again, we start over, are there any more brackets? 1 plus 6, closing bracket. So no, this is the innermost bracket, so we're going to go ahead and solve this one first. I got to check to make sure I actually hit record. I did, okay, so let's just start over. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. So let's go ahead and solve example M, and what we're looking for is for a bracket. So let's go ahead and start 2 to the exponent negative 3. 1, 2, 3. So let's go ahead and solve example M. And let's take a peek to see what we have. We have 2 to the exponent negative 3. Well, one day I will get this. 1, 2, 3. Okay, let's go ahead and solve example M. What we're looking for is a bracket. So 2 to the exponent negative 3, opening bracket. Perfect, so we're going to go ahead and start over and look for another opening bracket. And right again, we have another opening bracket. So let's go ahead and start over again to see if there's another bracket. 1 plus 6, closing bracket. So no, this is the innermost bracket. Now there's no exponents, there's no division or multiplication. So we can move along to step 4, and we can go ahead and just solve that. So 1 plus 6 is equal to 7, and we drop the rest of the equation. Now that we've solved that innermost bracket, we can take a step back to its parent and see that we have 7 divided by 7. There's no exponents, so we can go straight ahead and solve the division, which is part of step 3. 7 divided by 7 is equal to 1, and again, we're dropping the rest of the equation. Now that we've solved that bracket, we can again step out and look at the parent, and we have 2 to the exponent 3. So step 2, because there's no more brackets, we can go ahead and move to step 2. We can go ahead and solve the exponent. And this exponent is actually negative, so we want to make sure we flip it to get the reciprocal so that we're working with positive numbers. So that means we're going to put it over 1, so we're going to divide 1 by 2 to the power of 3, and the only sign that gets flipped is the sign that's associated with the exponent. So now we can go ahead and expand that out, or we're saying it's 2 times itself 3 times, so we have 2 times 2 times 2. We only want to solve one thing at a time, so 2 times 2 is 4, and again, dropping the rest of the equation. 4 times 2 is 8, and again, dropping the rest of the equation. So now we've ex finish the exponents, we can move on to step 3, which is division and multiplication, and we solve them in the order that they appear. So the first thing we have is 1 divided by 8. Okay, so 1 divided by 8 is equal to 0.125, and we're going to multiply 1.25 by 1, because we have an opening bracket here separating the two. So it gets converted into a multiplication sign. So 0.125 times 1 is 0.125, so our final answer is 0.125. Let's go ahead and look at n. Again, we're looking for brackets, and right out of the gate we have a bracket, so we're going to go ahead and ch check for more brackets. 
minus 9 times 4 divided by 6 closing bracket. So this in itself is the innermost bracket and we can go ahead and start solving. There's no exponents so we can move on to step 3. Is there any division or multiplication? Yes, we actually have both and we solve them in the order that they appear. So minus 9 times 4, a minus times a positive will give us a minus number, and 9 times 4 is 36. So we have minus 36, and we're dropping the rest of the equation. Minus 36 divided by 6 is equal to negative 6, right, because we have a, num a negative divided by a positive, which will give us a negative, and 36 divided by 6 is equal to 6. And so now we can take a step back and look at the parent and check to see are there any more brackets. No. So we can move on to step two, which is exponents. And we have a negative exponent here. So what this means is we're going to have to flip it again to get the reciprocal. So what we're actually saying is 1 divided by negative 6 to the power of 2. Again, only the exponent sign changes. The base number stays the same. We still have a negative here. So let's go ahead and expand out our exponent. So it's negative 6 times negative 6 because the exponent is 2 and we keep the base. So negative times a negative is a positive and 6 times 6 is 36. Now we can go ahead and move on to step 3 which is the division and we want to divide 1 divided by 36. 1 divided by 36 is 0 0.0277. There's no further operations required so our final answer is 0 0.0277. Let's look at O, and again, we're starting off with brackets, so we'll start again. Are there any child brackets? And yes, we have a child bracket right off the gate, so we're going to check to see if there are any more child brackets. 2 plus 6 closing bracket. So no, this is an innermost bracket, and we can go ahead and solve it. There's no exponents within it, so we can move on to step 3. There's no division or multiplication, so we can move on to step 4, which is addition and subtraction, and we do have addition, so we can go ahead and solve that. 2 plus 6 is equal to 8, and we're dropping the rest of the equation. Now that we've solved this bracket, we can take a step out, and we can try to expand. Uh, we can continue looking at the parent. Now, there is another bracket, so there's an exponent, but at, right beside it, there's another bracket. So we're going to start over and see if there's any child brackets within this new bracket. And there's not. It's 3 minus 9, so we're going to solve this innermost bracket now. There's no exponents within it, so we can move on to step 3. There's no division or multiplication, so we can go ahead and move to step 4. And there is subtraction, so we can go ahead and solve that. So 3 minus 9 is equal to minus 6, and we drop the rest of the equation. Now that we've solved this bracket, we can again take a step back and continue through our equation to see if there are any more brackets. As we go through, we can see that there is another set of brackets, so we start over again. Are there any more brackets? 4 divided by 2, closing bracket. So no, this is also an innermost bracket, so we can go ahead and solve this one. There's no exponents associated with this one, so it moves us right along to step 3, and there is a division, so let's go ahead and solve that. 4 minus 2 is equal to 2, and again, I'm dropping the rest of the equation. Now that this exponent is done, or this bracket rather, is completed, we can step back out to our parent, and we hit the closing bracket. So now we have gone through and cleared all of the brackets as far as we can within our parent bracket. That means we can move on to step two and check for any exponents. So right from the beginning, are there any exponents? Yes, we have the two that's associated with the eight. So let's go ahead and expand that. What we're saying is eight times itself, so it's eight times eight because the base is eight and the exponent is two, and we drop the rest of the equation. And we're only solving one step per line, so we're gonna go ahead and say eight times eight is equal to 64 and drop the rest of the equation. So as we continue through our equation, there are no further exponents, so we can go ahead and move on to step 3, which is division and multiplication. And if we take a quick glance, there is no division or multiplication signs, but we have brackets that are associated with each other, with nothing in between, which means we need to expand, and expand means multiply. So let's go ahead and clean up our equation. And we have 64 times negative 6 times 2. And I left the negative 6 within brackets because I wanted to make sure we kept this negative sign. I would be afraid to take the negative so uh, the brackets away from the negative 6 because we might accidentally subtract 64 and minus 6. So in this case I really want to keep the brackets in for legibility purposes so we can make sure that we're multiplying. So now we can go ahead, now that we've simplified our equation, we cleaned it all up, we can go ahead and start solving the multiplication in the order that they appear. So we want to take a positive 64 and multiply by a negative 6. 
So a positive times a negative will result in a negative, and 64 times 6 is 384. And we're dropping the rest of the equation. Now we have negative 384 times a positive 2. A negative times a positive will still result in a negative, and 384 times 2 will equal 768. There's no further operations required, so our final answer is negative 768. Okay, summary. Take a step back and let's just bring it all together. We've done a lot today, and this was a long video. Just because as you start adding the different operations, it makes equations longer. They're not any more difficult. It's just that now there's more steps that need to be done. So the trick here is to remember the orders of the operations. You always want to check for brackets. And if you find a bracket, you need to go in and check to see if there are any, any inner brackets within. You always have to solve the innermost bracket first and then work your way back out. Once you've solved the brackets, then you're going to look for exponents. Once you've cleared all the exponents, you can move to division, multiplication or uh, division or multiplication, and then addition and subtraction. So that order is critical. If you start doing them in the wrong order, you're going to get the wrong answer. You also want to make sure that you're only solving one operation at a time. There are times where if you have, they're within their own brackets, you can technically solve them at the same time, but when you're going back to check your answers, you're, you're going to have a harder time to backtrack. So if you did get the wrong answer, you have to remember, oh yes, some lines I did two things on, on one line and some things I only did one on a line. It can get a little tricky to remember where you were. Keep an eye on your signs. It can be very easy to want to just remove all of the brackets, but it, especially in like the last example we did, I kept the brackets around the negative 6 because I wanted to remember that we were multiplying the entire negative 6. It wasn't just a 6 or a minus 6, right? We didn't want to accidentally subtract that minus 6 from the rest of the equation. So it, sometimes it's beneficial to keep your brackets, and if you're having trouble with all of the different sub-brackets, you can try switching them out to using braces or the curly brackets. It's just a matter of being able to keep track of them, right? So just take it slow and remember that you're only solving one operation at a time. And if you have any problems, please let me know. Uh, the next video we're going to do is the Q&A. So if, as we've been going through these videos, I've gotten a few questions that people have sent me through email. And uh, I'm going to bring them all together and try to answer some of the questions that people have sent. So if you have any questions, let me know. If you don't make it in time for the Q&A video, attach it to the video that we're watching or send it to me later. I can make a second Q&A video if the, I think they're beneficial for everybody to hear or if it's just a very specific question for you, I can respond to you in an email or however means you decide to reach out to me. You know I love to hear from you, so if you have any questions or any future topic ideas that you would like to see, let me know. Reach out in whatever channel suits you best, and I look forward to seeing you at the next video.